Good evening everyone, it is Christine here and I'm a bit excited so I thought I'd better come on and be excited with you rather than just sitting quietly, well not so quietly sometimes, in my craft room and being excited by myself. So I have, as of last night, discovered the fun of English paper piecing. I actually used to think it was English paper piercing, but no, it's English paper piecing. Or if you see people talking about EPP, don't be like me and think, what sort of drug are they on? No, no, English paper piecing. And this is how people get beautiful, crisp looking hexagons, um, hopefully like the ones in front of me. And I thought I would share with you my rather, I think they're a little bit unorthodox method or a bit of a combination method, I'm not sure. Uh, if you're a bit of an EPP expert, you might want to turn away or you might want to watch and go, hey, that's interesting how she's doing that. So I'm very much at the start of my journey, so probably don't, don't necessarily um, take this as, as gospel. Um, but I do watch some videos of people that do this. Um, and I think Emma Jones, I hope I've got the name right. She says there's no one right way or wrong way. There seems to be a bit of a division amongst the community between people that do the glue basting and people do, that do the thread basting. I'm in fact using a combo of the two. I haven't come across many people doing the combo method. And maybe it's because they're immediately adhering what they create to other pieces. And so therefore it's sort of holding them with just the single method. But I want my shapes to stay really crisp even when I keep them to then later use in other slow stitch projects. So what you see in front of me are my little batch from last night. So from an hour and a bit last night, um, and there was a fair bit of experimenting and playing around. And there's even some more actually that I've already um, popped in my little um, kit for later. Hopefully they might be down here. And we can show you a few of those as an example later. Grab those out so we've got them handy. Let's pop those ones over here. So I hope you're all doing well. I hope your start to the week has been gentle on you. Um, and then the other thing I want to show you, sorry, I'm leaning down all over the place, is these are the EPP templates that I'm using and they're called Epiflex. I'm not in any way affiliated or sponsored. I bought these myself. Um, I bought these from the lovely Linda at Little Patch of Heaven. Again, not affiliated um, with Linda, just love her store and love the fact that she has special sales and other things. So I was able to get these um, for $13. They're normally $18.95 and they're part of the Homespun 2023 block of the month. But these are really exciting because, and I've watched some videos on them subsequently, they're Australian designed. Australian made, they're laser cut, they're reusable, um, they can be bent, um, you can use them with whip stitch or ladder stitch, they're transparent so you can see what you're cutting around, so they're kind of cool really rather than using paper or having to cut out paper and then having the risk that things um, don't actually cut out totally accurately. So let me show you they come in this bag and it's a bit hard to see because they're clear. Um, they're probably not that easy to show on photography. And so this is what you get in your 1895 bag if you get it from Little Patch of Heaven. And that's for the folks in Australia, littlepatchofheaven.com.au. And then there's some more in here. So this was the standard bag. I think there was one that had even more shapes that was more expensive, but because I was starting out my journey, I thought I'd just get the, the standard offering, but this was a good way to get a mix of things. And they are kind of the smaller sizes, which will be useful for me for my slow stitching projects because I like quite small embellishments. I don't want huge at this stage, not to say I won't necessarily do some other ones. So I've been using this little shape and this one's had glue on it because I've popped it out just before from one of my shapes. Um, this one minus the glue, but harder to see. Um, so yeah, just lovely little hexes. They've got a hole in the middle, which is handy for when you're flipping them out. And they've got some little bits, those little lines allow them to, to bend in different directions, which I've discovered is handy when you're stitching pieces together. But in this kit, I've also got these, I think these are called coffin, which is a little bit, a little bit morbid, but I suppose that's the shape. Um, and then there's even smaller hexes. 
which I might need to progress to trying those another time. Um, so the small ones are those. And then these are, I don't know if these are called kite shapes, I'm not sure. But anyway, got those ones. Got curved shapes as well. Um, got circles. They only have a hole, they don't have any other, but I guess they can still bend. Maybe they don't have to bend because they're not in this. I doubt they'll interlock directly with something else, probably. Um, just having a look if there's any other shapes in here. I think they might be the main ones. Oh, I think there's two sizes of those, those coffin sizes. And then possibly there's two sizes of the kite size as well. I think, yep, yeah, there are. Oh, no, that's a coffin one. Hang on, is there a, another kite size? I'm not sure, but if you have a look on the website, I think it um, yeah spells out everything that that's in there. So, but there's a lot, so that will give me a lot of um, a lot of material to use when I'm wanting to do a whole batch all at once. Let me just put that out of the way. So my rather um, unorthodox method, which I will show you up front. I've got a little hand wipey thing on hand um, because when I'm using glue, I do get sticky fingers. Um, so we need to cut out a shape. I've got my some samples of, I got these um, little scraps from the sewing layer. I think someone must have been planning to maybe make some hexes and they'd cut out some larger shapes to use um, of fabric, I guess, with a bit of a, although it's not really cut that straight, but I'm just using these for this purpose. So what I would do is grab one of my hexy shapes and I'm not even going to worry that this one already has a bit of um, glue on it. I'm going to grab my scissors. And so on these shapes, I can probably actually fit in to, I think, possibly, although it might be a bit of a squeeze, um, for the ease. Maybe I can still do two this way. Let's see. Could live on the edge, I suppose. Yeah, we should be able to do that. Let's give that a whirl. So I'm just going to cut down the middle. Now you could, if you were being really fancy, you could plan to arrange it because you can see through it and position it over um, over the flower that you wanna cut around. So we could do that actually with this one. Let's do that. So I'm gonna leave that seam, seam allowance at that side. So I'm just leaving, I don't know, is it about half a centimeter? I'll show you in a second and you can sort of judge, as I say. I'm just um, newly new to this particular part of the the fabric crafting. I have made hexes before, but I've made them where I fold them up. I'll show you one of the ones which I think I've shown in other videos where I fold them from a circle. So rather than making a suffet puff, I fold into the center and create a little hexy. And it's funny, that hexy that I've made is actually this very size, even though it wasn't designed to um, be matchy matchy. So it's actually pretty precise even with that, but it doesn't get such sharp looking corners on it. So there you can see I've left um, an area around, around it. And then what I'm then gonna do is turn the fabric over. I'm gonna get my trusty UHU glue, Uhu glue, Uhu. Um, I'm gonna put a good amount on, but not too much, enough to cover the surface. And so some people use the fancy, um, I think they're called Soline or something, um, glues. Um, and I think they're quite expensive. I don't have any in stock. And so I thought, nope, I'm going to give it a whirl using what I have. And I figured that these plastic templates, unlike paper, that the glue wouldn't um, totally adhere, that it would be able to be loosened from it when it dries. Um, whereas a yuhu with fabric on paper tends to form a pretty good seal, so I wouldn't have done that. So what I've done is just folded around, making sure I get those really nice um, sharp corners as I fold, um, and just creating a similar-ish um, seam around it. 
and then I'm just going to push it down. And what I usually then do is just give it a, a push down on something else. I'll usually then sit it on a surface that it won't sort of stick to and put it off to the side to dry. So let's do, and then I put my little scraps in my um, orch jar. It's like a lolly jar. That's all my threads and scraps. I've got an exciting project I think that I'm going to do for a um, open collaboration that's being run by Annie um, Claxton from Arty Fati Annie. I hope I got that right. Um, so I've got a bit of an idea of how I'm going to use my scrap jar for that project. So stand by. Okay, let's do another one. So I've just placed it. Um, you can do it on the front if you're fussy cutting. So we can do that actually when you cut it around so you can kind of see what you're going to get. Although I kind of have to fit it in this bit of the fabric, but I don't mind. I quite like the leaves. Um, which way will it fit best? I just want to try and sort of get as much of an even um, area around it. And if you go too close to it, it will make your job hard when you're when you're folding it over. So again, we're going to apply a Yoohoo glue. Then we're going to put our little shape on. I think twice already I've actually glued on the wrong side. In one of these ones, this one over here, I actually left it because I kind of liked the fainter, fainter design. I sometimes do that when fabrics are a bit garish for what I'm doing. I'll actually have a look at the reverse side and use that. That's just lovely, even with the greenery and just that little, little poke of, of floral. Oops. So again, I'll put that um, off to the side. So I think that's given you enough idea of um, the gluing down. Um, so basically you cut around and then you glue. Thankfully my hands haven't become um, super... I haven't really become super gluey because I guess I only did two. Um, but let's just prefer to use the good old face washer with a bit of warm water in a old takeaway tub um, and a clean towel rather than using the disposable um, towelettes. Although I have seen one sewing lady, now I've forgotten who does it, um, uses those disposable um, hand towels. She must wash them and then she uses them to dye and uses them as a cheap form of fabric. So that's a thought, if you do like using the disposable ones. No judgment, whatever, do whatever works for you, I say. Don't need any police here on the crafting channels, do we? Okay, so what will be next? What will be next is once we've got um, left them to dry, I'm gonna take one that I've already um, glued and I'm gonna grab my Threads. I'm going to grab my needle and I might just put a bit of hand cream on because I, even in that process of washing my hands I have, um, come on hand cream, pop pop pop, I think I'm reaching the end of it, there we go. Now we're going to thread the needle. And so I'm just using just a regular cotton. Some people use special Invisa, Invisa cottons, but hey, I'm just using what I have. This is meant to be, from what I've um, sort of heard of the history of it, it's meant to be something that's quite affordable because you're using scraps, you don't need big bits of fabric. Um, and in this case, you're using a reusable product in the, mo in the middle and you're using a cheaper form of glue. So I'm going to pop through. Um, in fact, some people actually pop from underneath, but I've not been doing that. So I'm just going to pop through from one corner bit of fabric to catch the other corner bit. 
and you can either tie the knot before you do this or you can just do a couple of over stitches and make a knot yourself like this now this is twice knotted but that's okay um, and if you don't have a knot there then it just makes it a little bit um, less sort of city uppy if that's going to bother you so I'm catching both bits of um, fabric at the corner and I'm going through three times for the first spot and then I'm going to move around sorry and I probably need to get a bit better back on camera and then I'm going to catch this corner and so the great thing having glued them down is that I'm not having to try and sort of hold it bend it over and hold the fabric in place while I do the thread basting which is what would happen if you were um, doing it before you've actually glued it some people iron it um, and then do that but I tried that on um, some of them and because these are so tiny it's really hard to kind of get the iron to go where you want it to go so you're doing about two on each of them the other bits I think I just did three on that one but never mind again do as you please I say This one we're quite narrow at the corner. Probably left the seam a little bit, a little bit small on this one, but we'll see if we can fix the problem. One. I'm going to just have to do a couple more than normal number of stitches because I just want to make sure it is actually properly anchored. I think that's okay. So yeah, that's an example where you do want to leave an appropriate seam allowance around it just to make it easier when you are stitching. And as far as I've seen, you don't have to do... Um, a stitch around to where you started because both those corners by this point are stitched down and this is where you can also then just tie a little a little knot with the final stitch so that one is done so it doesn't take too long once you've um, done that initial step and even the sticking down doesn't take too long um, let's grab a another one that might be nice with that one and so this one we won't pre knot the thread I'll just show you how you can pop through the corner so you're popping through one side and to the other side and then you're just going to leave a little tail on the end of your thread put your finger over it and then you can just do another stitch through that same hole and then I'll just pop through that stitch just to make a little knot and pull. And then I'm going to just do the same. I think I'll just do two more to be sure. Catching both sides of the fabric. I'll just do one more through the same hole. And that should hold it well now. And then popping around to the next corner. So you're following the way that when you were folding, you were folding around this. So this is anti-clockwise, I think, yes. Oops. And I've managed to, it's even made a knot just by not trying to make a knot because I, let's just see if I can fix that up. Come on. There we go. So I'd love to hear what you've been crafting this week if you've been working on something. I've decided I'm going to keep um, every week, hopefully challenge myself with something new so for the next few weeks it might be challenging myself with these some of the new shapes from the EPP templates the epiflex interestingly I haven't seen that many videos on YouTube of people using them I've seen them from the um, creator but not even a heap there unless I'm just not searching on the right thing or maybe people are using them and they haven't tagged it 
as I say, I'm just being a bit experimental in my own use, but I always like to see how other people do things. And yeah, it's funny, I've been quite intimidated. I don't know why I've been intimidated by EPP. I've heard about it for a while, um, but just hadn't tried it myself. I thought maybe it was all a bit too technical. Maybe it was the sort of thing of getting the right shapes and then that whole thing between people talking about thread basting and glue basting. I'm not sure, but it's good to good to take yourself out of your comfort zone and try something new. Okay, so that one's done. Save that bit of thread for something else. So what we can then do um, is stitch them together. And so the great thing with hexies is they make really cute little um, flower shapes with very little effort. Let's move that up. Hopefully I have been on camera. Um, boo -boo -boo. Now you can arrange them however you want, so you probably take a bit more time to think about your arrangement. But you can end up with a cute little flower like that or like the one, here's one I made earlier. Um, but for now, we'll just stitch two of our little shapes together. Uh, which one do I do? Do I want to do those? No, we'll do, we'll do the two that we've um, done the thread facing on because that's what you're meant to do first. And I was having a browse on the Epiflex website last night um, and they do have all different designs that you can make with the different shapes. So I'll be downloading some of those as a prompt because there's probably things I wouldn't think about how you can assemble these. Oops. In fact, yeah, oh no, actually I don't need to tie a knot. I'll do it the way they suggest where you tie a knot as you're stitching it. So what I'm going to do is put um, the two fronts together of these and just have the two sides um, as well aligned up as possible. And then I'm going to pop through at the corner. And the good thing with these plastic templates as well, I guess they're called plastic, um, is that you won't stab through them with a needle. They've got a really, um, like the edge is nice and um, heavy duty enough that the needle won't go through it. Whereas apparently that can be a problem with um, English paper piecing the actual paper or cardboard pieces. So I've just tied a little knot there with my first stitch wise holding the end. And I'll just do a second little knot because I'm always, always a bit paranoid that it might come undone. Okay, and then you can just um, start putting tiny little stitches through. It's gonna be really hard to show, just catching um, the edges. And so you can do a ladder stitch or do a whip, whip stitch. And I'm doing them, they say do them about a needle width apart. And then just catching just a tiny little bit of the, the fabric. I'm staring down here through the, um, <laughs> through the camera stand apparatus for an extra degree of difficulty. So you're just catching the very, very edge. I thought I just caught the end of it, but no, I didn't catch the end, so that's okay. So I thought it would take absolutely ages, but um, yeah, I got lots done um, just in a, a short period. So there you go, that is two of them sewn together and yeah really nice neat stitch that you don't even um, necessarily notice and now what they suggest you do is when you get to a corner that you do a locking stitch they call it and I'll just do it the way I do a locking stitch might not be the way they do it oops and I've just I have actually created another knot that I didn't want to actually have can I fix that now otherwise I'll just have to um, stitch that knot in 
as well. That's a bit frustrating. So that's not how you create a, <laughs> a knot or a knock, notching stitch. And you don't stab yourself with a needle either, ideally. But hey, it's just usual mayhem in the craft room here. I think I had a super busy day with work, so I think I'm just in a silly mood, silly mood tonight. So um, you can then, maybe I'll show you, have I got, I don't know if I've got another one that I've thread based it. Let's have a look around. Have I got any others that I have done the thread basting on? If not, we can um, do one actually without it. I'm sure it will still, still work okay. Or we can just quickly, um, actually we'll just quickly thread baste another one just so I can show you and do it the proper way. Let's not do any, oh hang on, there's, um, no that one doesn't have its, have its thing in it anymore. That was one of my other ones. All right, I'm just looking what's going to go nicely with this as a design. That's quite nice. Let's do, let's thread it based this one. I'll just leave the thread on that one. And then I'll grab my other little thread from before. And we will do this one. We'll thread base this. I'm going to pop through one of the corners. I'm going to hold the tail with my finger. I'm going to pop through the fabric again. Then I'm going to tie a knot the thread and I'm going to go back through the same hole just do it twice more to be sure and then jump around to the next and do two stitches and then the next and two stitches again This one actually caught properly, so I might just just do one more, and then again. And the benefit of letting the glue dry, so these have dried since last night, although it would dry much quicker, um, is that it doesn't get all gluey on your needle. So it's good to do a batch of gluing and then you can do a batch of thread basting um, and then you can either sew as you go or sew them all together when you've got a batch of them and have it really easy. And so I'm just going to tie, oops, I'm going to hopefully tie a knot, although I just noticed something very funky was going on at the end of that, end of that thread. There we go. I think that's, that's anchored, isn't it? Right, so we'll just um, snip off that little end. And then we can go back to our little pair over here. We thread our needle that's already attached. Let's get rid of my minky cardboard. We're finished with the gluing component. And so I can put my little shape. Again, I put it against what I'm going to want to sew it against. So along this edge and you want to get it as close and as aligned. One of my early ones, I didn't line up quite enough to the middle and so it had a little gap and I just had to unstitch. Um, and then we're going to go from that corner where we'd already locked the thread by doing a little knot at the corner. Um, and then we're gonna continue along. Let me just check that it's gonna come out. Yep, that will come out the way we want it. So we'll do along here. Oops. Two 
just catching the two edges. Catching, catching, catching. Just checking alignment as I go. I'm sure it will all become sort of second nature in due course. So that's that one done. Um, and so I'll just do the locking stitch again at the corner. So just coming through both sides, bringing it around to make a loop and then just doing a stitch there. And then I'm just going to bring the need the thread back in and I'm going to pass it along under the piece of fabric there. And then at this corner, we can do another little locking stitch. And I think these are just these little locking stitches are just meant to make sure that it doesn't come apart. Um, although it seems these, it does seem pretty secure. Now this is where the these templates come in handy because you can just easily fold them when we have to get this piece and so along this side um, here. So that one can just um, bend, which is super handy. So again, we just line them up so they are nicely aligned and then we're just going to, because we've done our locking stitch, we're just going to sew along this edge here. Probably should have put my thimble on when you're using a small needle and pushing. Just want to get the nice little corners together. And then I think I'll just put a locking stitch here. Let's have a little look. So there we go. That is a little shape there. So right then just put this thread here. And I'll just put another final little stitch through in there. And I'll leave the thread on in case I want to do something else with that one. So I thought what we could now do is, um, here's one that I stitched together last night. Um, I've taken one of the plastics out today just to experiment. And I'll show you how I proceed with this bit of the task. So these ones were glued just like what we did tonight and stitched around just like what we did. So I've got my ironing board behind me and I've got my just regular household um, steam iron. Um, I only ever really use it for my fabric, so I prefer to have clothes that I don't have to iron. I've got the odd linen vests and things like that, but most of my clothes don't require the ironing. So there's the steam coming out. So I'm just giving it an iron on the, the front. Um, the good thing with these apparently is that they are also the plastics um, heat resistant so you can iron it quite happily. Um, and what I'd read online is that where you do glue basting, um, giving it a little iron 
um, with steam just helps to loosen the glue apparently. Now I experimented with a few things to then um, just run around and help loosen the glue. I did try this um, nail fly file but um, the best thing I came across was an old knitting needle. So what I do, um, let's start on this side, is I just um, run around with the knitting needle and just lift up where the glue would have been attaching the, the fabric there. Um, and the good thing about the needle is it's not sharp, so it's not gonna kind of poke through, and this, it comes to a tapered end, and it just seems to have a good, a good point for doing that. And then I stick my needle under where um, the little hole is, which is where the hole comes in handy, and I do the same, just going around underneath. I just want to know that um, we've kind of lifted away and then I'm going to use again my knitting needle and I'm just going to lift probably should still use it here shouldn't I just lift and away and there you go you've still got those really nice sharp corners on it. You can do another one. So it is kind of fun doing the the um so we're just gonna run our needle around and you can actually just hear it just kind of yeah you can hear a little bit as it comes away. You can definitely feel it. Um, and so then this one again just run run around and you could do all your loosening um, first up don't you don't have to do it the way I'm doing it here. Um, and then just sort of lift them all out one by one. So I might... I think it's easier to lift away when from the side that they're anchored in to start with that. And then once you've kind of got some out, it's probably easier to just kind of pry it. Seems to be the, the ones closest to the edge there, the... The trickiest but they're not particularly tricky to to get out there you go and then we may as well i suppose for the satisfaction we may as well flicky flicky them all out just give them all the loosening first up i think and so yeah i think if i was sewing onto a I could possibly get away with just um, glue basting but because these shapes are probably going to sit around for a little while awaiting a project that I want to affix them onto although I am kind of excited so I might even create a project I can um, add them to sooner rather than later but in the future I'll probably be making them and then um, keeping them on hand I think they'll be a great little holiday thing because you don't need to take too much away with you and you can just make a, a batch of them. Is this like watching paint dry or is it actually exciting? I don't know, it's exciting for me. my partner thinks I'm just weird when I tell him with excitement what I've been working on the, up in my craft room. Always give him a show and tell at, at bedtime as well. He's excited tonight. He's watching his trucking shows on TV. So Travis and him are watching trucking shows. I'd much rather be up here with you. And pretty things to play with. So I think I've been a bit dodgy staying on camera tonight, so apologies for that in advance. There we go. 
and one more only one to go If you think you've got one edge that's just not sort of jumping up, you can always just move around and find one that will jump up for you. Come on out, you come. even where I had to give it a bit of a jiggle um, it's still gone back to its very nice shape now I'm just going to take off that little end over here of the thread I don't need that poking out and now I'm just going to turn around and give it a very quick um, little iron and a steam wool that made a quite a, a steam puff <laughs> okay. and there we go so that's super super cute um, I think the glue also gives it a nice little bit of um, a robustness to it but without being stiff because I think normally people would spray with some sort of starchy mixture again I don't have that on hand I think there are ways you can make it by hand but if I figure if I can cover that step in the process of making the thread basting easier by using the glue and I can get these really nice sharp corners and just to give you the comparison to the ones I fold myself um, it's definitely puffier to the ones that I just thread basted where's an example of one of those from the other day I'm trying to find one did I get them out of my kit before I don't know I don't know where they've gone Oh, here's, yeah, here's one that was just thread based, I can tell, because that's not got any stiffness. Um, so it's still quite, quite nice, but it was really hard keeping all the edges in, and you'd probably need a bit more of a border around to just give you that, that leeway. So these are great where you just have a very fine, fine edge on them. Anyway, I'll let you go. Um, thanks for bearing with me. I hope I've given you a different way, possibly, if you're already in EPP. Um, aficionado um, or otherwise if you haven't tried it give it a go and if you're wanting to make your job um, easy for me these have been really great I don't have anything to compare them to um, but they've certainly made my task nice and easy and even the ones that are covered in glue you could just reuse them again like that or these actually just wash and you can apparently even put them in your washing machine on like a cold wash I just wash them under the tap and just um, chuck them on a face washer and they'll just dry off but I haven't actually bothered washing these from the ones that I used last night. So I think I can keep using them until they get like glue, glue peels that are affecting them, keeping their, keeping their shape. So there you go. And then you can just um, add to your flower shapes and make a, um, a quilt even. But yeah, they're definitely much easier to use when they've got the glue on them because this is even a bit more sort of floopy to be... Um, fixing it whereas this is just the right texture for my liking and it's going to stay nicely um, kept even when it's just kept loosely like that so take care everyone I will go now I'll stop waffling and see you soon bye <laughs>